Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Let's make a bullseye shirt today. I've washed my shirt just to get out any sizing or anything that might be in the shirt. Then I've soaked the shirt in a soda ash solution for at least 20 to 30 minutes. I wrung it out really well and so it's just barely damp. I've also turned the shirt inside out. I'd like to put the bullseye right in the center of the shirt, so we need to find the center of the shirt. And to do that, I'm going to fold the shirt in half. Once I have the shirt folded in half, I'm going to fold it in half the other way. So I'm going to grab the bottom or the hem of the shirt and fold it up to the neck or the top of the shirt. That center point is the center point of the shirt. So I'm going to use a washable marker and make a mark right there. Then I'm going to unfold the shirt. And use my fingers to pinch that mark that I just made. Then I'm going to lift the shirt up off the table and just let it fall naturally. I'm going to use some rubber bands to make the rings of my bullseye. I'm adding the first rubber band where I'd like the center of the bullseye to start. The further down the shirt I place this rubber band, the larger that first center circle is going to be. Then I'm going to continue to add rubber bands on down the shirt to make the rings of the bullseye. You can add as many rings to this bullseye as you want to. You can make them as far apart as you want to. You can make them very uniform if you'd like to measure them out and make them all exact. You can do whatever you want to do with your shirt. Okay, so let's start applying the dye. Right on the very end or the center of the bullseye, I'm adding wholesale pink from Custom Colors. The next section is Amethyst from Dharma Trading Company. Plum Blossom from Dharma. The next color is Fuchsia from Dharma. Wisteria from Dharma. I had a variety of pinks and purples mixed up for a couple other projects. So I'm combining them to use them on this shirt. The next color is Iris from Pro Chemical and Dye.
In the next three sections, I'm gonna start repeating the colors. I'm beginning with wholesale pink, followed by amethyst, and ending with plum blossom. Then I'm gonna turn the shirt over and repeat the same color pattern on the back side. A helpful tip is if you're using a bunch of colors like I am on this shirt, when I place the colors back down on my table, I place them in the order that I'm using them. That way I can just grab the next color in line and I won't get them mixed up. If you're wondering where I purchased my dyes, there's a link down below in the description for this video which shows the dye colors that I used and where I purchased them. There are also links for quite a few of the other items that I use when I tie dye. Each of these sections is pretty thick, so I'm trying to make sure I add plenty of dye to get good color saturation. I'm using my hands to press on and squish some of these areas to see whether or not they feel full of dye and fully saturated. I'm gonna put the shirt aside and allow it to process in a warm room that's at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours. To rinse the shirt, I took the shirt to my utility sink and I began rinsing it in cold water. I'm rinsing it in cold water to get out any of the soda ash that's left in the shirt. Then I'm gonna untie the shirt and continue rinsing the shirt in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the shirt. I'm gonna continue rinsing the shirt until the water is almost clear. Then I'm gonna put the shirt in the washing machine along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent and use a hot water cycle to wash the shirt. After the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. So what do you think? Do you think it looks like a bullseye? I have a few areas down toward the bottom part of the shirt, which was the thickest part of the shirt, that don't have quite as good a color saturation. I have a few white areas showing. If I wanted to really get this entire shirt totally colored with no white left, I would have let the shirt dry out completely before I started applying the dye. When I dye a shirt that started out dry and I press on an area, I know that any of the liquid that squishes up out of that area is dye. However, when I start dyeing a shirt that is damp and I press on an area, any of the liquid that comes up out of that area it could either be soda ash water or it could be dye. So that's why it's a little bit easier for me to get the center of a shirt totally saturated whenever I start out dyeing it dry. But overall, I really like the way that the shirt turned out. 
If you guys have enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.